though at your service is in Dunmore East. John and Francis Brennan have run successful hotels for decades. Now they're on the road again and using their expertise to help struggling businesses across the country. But we need to get what we call the wow factor into it. Their latest challenge is in the tourists' favourite Dunmore East, where Grace and Alan Skeen want to expand their holiday resort by building luxury lodges. Like this to me would be what you put on a hen house or something like that. Yeah, we need help. We need help on that. But they've chosen to go ahead during the most challenging period ever faced by the hospitality industry. Can the Brennans help this couple transform their business? You know, I'm worried about Grace and Alan mm -hmm. because I think the plan that they've put together is very ambitious. Above the bay in Dunmore East, there's a five-acre holiday resort with pitches for private mobile homes, a golf course, and clubhouse with restaurant and bar. Some location? Yeah, fantastic. What well, Dunmore East is lovely now. Yeah. Yeah, and it's very attractive, especially to the Dublin market. It's owned and run by Grace and Alan Skeen. With a background in construction, Alan is the operations and golf manager. His wife Grace is a qualified accountant, and she oversees the admin and accommodation side of the business. So I'm third generation. So my grandfather and grandmother originally bought the, most of the land holding here, and. Um, uh, my father would have been a dairy farmer here. So my mother and father, they went from dairy farming into golf uh, just in the early 90s. In the boom years, we did quite a lot of building around here um, with the holiday homes. Then Grace and myself, we built the holiday park up at the, uh, the back of the, the resort here. In, I suppose we started in 2011 and we yeah. opened it in 2013. As well as the mobile home park, there are also touring and camping facilities and a newly shortened golf course. Last year we decided to make the leap of faith and um, we got in a company in to redesign the 18 holes back into a nine hole. We changed quite a lot of the holes around here in the headland, so it is a total coastal nine hole course now. Changing the course left Grace and Alan with spare land on which they dream of building luxury holiday lodges. The grand plan is for a mix of one bedroom and two bedroomed um, holiday lodges with your decking, um, with a, a mix of some of them with, the, with hot tubs. They have already drawn up extensive plans and they hope eventually to build a total of 26 lodges. But for the first phase, they're concentrating on just six. Planning permission would be the issue. Yes. In that coastal location like that, yeah. visibility along the coast, never easy for planning. Yeah. If they get planning permission, they hope to have these built and ready in time for summer, just nine months away. And our budget then, this is the scary side of it. Originally when we went pricing it up, it was coming in at slightly over 100,000 per lodge. Um, we're looking at scaling that back, aren't we? We're, we're hoping to get that back down around 87. Six lodges and the necessary infrastructure adds up to a big chunk of change. The actual cost of the application is ferocious. Yeah. But by the time you have all your engineers' reports, your surveys and this, that and the other, it will take a lot. The total spend is 790,000 of a spend, isn't it? Which will be um, partially bank money and partially company. It's a big budget project. And with plans for these self-catering lodges still at the drawing stage, they want the Brennan's expert input. Definitely take uh, the two gents' opinion on the layout, on the site layout side of things. Um, just, I suppose, they've been there and they've done that. At their Kenmare HQ, the Brennans are ready for action. Now you're heading for the sunny southeast. I am, looking forward to it now. Luxury lodges, overlooking the ocean. Yeah, a little golf course. What more could you want? Good accounts, that's what you want. I'll report. Francis hits the road to make a full investigation. And there's another area of the business that badly needs the Brennan's expertise, the restaurant and bar. One of my main sticking points. Um, yeah. I think that's where we need, we have a downfall there and we need huge help. 
we know that we're making mistakes, but we just can't pinpoint what it is exactly. Yeah. Um, so whether that's a, a menu thing or whether that's the premises itself. Yeah, we need help. We need help on that, so the <laughs> barn restaurant definitely. Hello, Good morning, Francis. Francis. How are you? Here. I'm delighted. Nice to meet you. It's so nice to have and you here. And you have such a great view. Fantastic. Yeah. Something else, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So are you all set? All I set. think we're all set. Yeah. 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 Will we go in, so? Yeah, of course. Lovely. Yeah, absolutely. You lead the way there. Francis wants to check everything is on par. You're in the long grass now. You're a pro at this. You're in the long grass. <laughs> Right, we get, we get the lie of the land here now. Get the lie of the land is yeah. right. Very okay, good. Those plans. Going to so put it up on I this won't, here. Won't distract you with the views yet, Francis. Yeah. We have a look at the. That's right. So now this is the plan. Where am I on this plan now? You are here now. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's right. I get the feel. So yeah. um, basically, there'll be a, a road coming in here. Yes. Uh, to the front of it, you'll have the lodges. This side of the road, then you'll have a play area slash green here, area yeah. park. And okay. behind that again, you'll have um, another row of houses. That's phase two. Just the quickly, what weighs yeah. the sun then for the decking? Sun comes up here over salty islands. And right. Beautiful sunrise in the morning. Uh, sits over here in the west. So, so you have an arc all day. We've full day sunshine. Yeah. And is this the schematic here on the top left? Is that or is it, that just it, something? It, um, no, it'll be quite similar to that. Yeah. Um, the colour we haven't quite chosen. This is uh, clad in cedarwood, natural cedarwood. Right. It's not great beside the sea with the salt. I was um, going to say, yeah. Things, so and are you is, working on that at the moment? We right? are. We've come up with a composite base panel. We'll get a look at that later on on the prototype. Okay. And tell me now, what about planning? Uh, we are working with the county council at the moment. Yes, have um, you spoke to them? We have indeed. Yeah. Uh, we have a meeting again tomorrow with them, um, right. with the county manager and the senior planner. So they're anxious to get something tourism based in Dunmore. Right. The plan is to build six holiday lodges to be ready in time for next summer. John is casting his expert eye over this big budget project, but he's not convinced by the layout. Now, I'm disappointed with this. These are all far too close together. That's roads and roundabouts, streets. That's an estate. They're so close together. Francis wants to get a sense of how the whole business operates. So next up is the mobile home park. Owners pay an annual fee to keep their mobiles here. So how many mobile homes have you got here now? So at the moment we have 61 mobiles in right. the park. At the moment we have the capacity to make it 73, so we can put in another 12. Now can I rent it? No. No rentals? No, no. I suppose the ethos within the whole park is that um, everyone knows their neighbour and everyone's quite familiar with it and yeah. as families so, grow up together as well. So now, it, like, this is the, the big part of the business I expect? Right? Yeah. It is, yeah. yeah. This, is, this is pretty much the engine of the whole, yeah. of the whole resort. This has worked so. from the day that we've opened it. We used to go caravanning to Cortan when we were kids. Really? Right? Okay. With the caravan? Yeah, my aunt of ours had a caravan oh, there. Oh, very we used good. To go down. Did you like it? I loved it because there was 25 of us in the caravan for six. Do you know that sort of thing? <laughs> and we had a great time. So I have camping experience what? now. <laughs> we might see you back in one, so. Uh. There's already a terrific business here with the mobile homes, but it's clear that they need help with the new bills and a kind of a plan for the rest of the resort. The Brennans are exploring every aspect of the business. A very nice website, very bright, very colourful, very fresh, full of energy. Yeah, you'd investigate further looking at that. Now I need to investigate the figures. We'll know if it's all true or not. Yeah, the mobile home business is lovely money. And the food and the beverage is not what it should be given the location they're in. Difficult. We find that once the restaurant opens, it consumes all our energy and our time. Everything is dropped. Everything else is dropped in the business the minute the restaurant opens, and I imagine that's not supposed to be the case um, if we want to try and build the business in a, in a different direction and, and expand it. So it leads to 17 or 18 hour days, seven days of the week for three months of the year, so that obviously isn't yeah. sustainable for yeah. <laughs> forever, so that yeah. needs to... Uh, change, I suppose, in that sense. Now, I often think people have this wonderful, dreamy impression of owning a restaurant. A restaurant is not an easy thing to run, and I think an awful lot of people realise that after they've opened. Francis needs to discover what's going wrong in the restaurant for himself. 
Now, why would you put brown tables into a seaside restaurant? It takes down the tone completely. The decor is a bit my front room and plastic flowers. I hate plastic flowers. Now, this menu tells me that the people that are have put it together aren't thinking about where they are. First of all, we're by the sea. There should be much more fish on it. It should be much more salady and it should be much lighter. Not eight on fillet steaks and burgers. To me, it's very heavy and it's not an enticing seaside menu. Now, this is a selection of the items they do on the menu, like a small fillet and a piece of fish and all this. The fish is nicely cooked now. Mmm, it's nice. Now, lovely prawns. Mmm, prawns are gorgeous. But I never order pasta at lunchtime. Very nice. It's food, well cooked, but not thought out about the site where it is. So we need to do work on that. Back in Kenmare, John turns his attention to the lodges that have inspired their plans. So this is their vision. This is what they're aspiring to. And I have to say, it looks very nice. Decks, lovely doors, very nice interiors. Slightly Scandinavian, but very, very nice. If the prototype of what they're providing is as good as this, I think Francis will be very happy. But is Francis going to be happy? He's on his way to see the lodge they've already constructed on site. Now, this is the prototype of the lodges that we spoke about, but I'm a bit confused because what I saw on the schematic and from the way they were speaking, they were meant to be luxury lodges, but I'm not at all impressed by this. It, it's not attractive, it's just sitting there and there's nothing going for it. Like we were talking about a composite wood finish, but this is plastic PVC as far as I can see. Like this to me would be what you put on a hen house or something like that. The interior here is nicer anyway. This is the lounge area. And these are, these are good because they're very serviceable and they're a good choice for public use. And the kitchen is well equipped. We could probably do it with a deep freeze. For the ice cream for the youngsters. Hi John, I'm here now. I'm after coming over to look at the prototype lodge, all right? Yes. And it's the furthest thing from a lodge that you'll ever see, and it's also plastic. <laughs> a, a lodge to me is something that would be made of wood and would be like, you know, like maybe, you know, you know what you see in the Canadian Rockies, a lodge, all right? But these are like yeah. for the builder to, to deliver his dockets for the bricks, you know what I mean? It's a site shop of, as opposed to a unique experience. Yeah, exactly, exactly, you have it in one. The Brennans call Alan and Grace in for a meeting. It's time for a showdown. Hello. Hi, John. Hello. How are you? Hi, Francis. Hi, Francis. How are you? You got here safely. We did. Great. Before we start anything, will one of you or other of you define a lodge? Large living room, kitchen, um, outdoor area on it. One story. One story. What you're mentioning there is not from far from what I'd have in my own mind for that, okay? Yeah. But then I went to look at the, at the prototype. Okay. And you're, well, you're going to hate this now. Okay. I saw a hen house. Okay. <laughs> okay. You did. <laughs> that is the truth now. I was so okay. <laughs> disappointed in what I saw. Oh, no. It was so far from a lodge. That was the word we were using. In your mind. In my okay. mind. Okay. That I just, I, I, I just couldn't. And even it. with your full-length glass windows. And... Yeah. Francis was disappointed in the ambience and the feel of what you were planning versus the quality of the site and the potential of the business that you could have. Francis and John's research has uncovered some good looking and cheaper alternatives. There's a couple in just in the trees, okay. And this one is absolutely gorgeous, I think. And guess what? That's two bedroomed. The price of that would be about 
65 to 70,000 euros put on site. Okay. The decisions you're going to make now will have implications for the next 15, 20 years. So to take a bit of a deep breath, look at the place. John has concerns about the density of the layout. So when I was shown this, I got a bit of a fright, like Francis, okay? For the simple reason, this is an estate of houses. And I don't think that's really what the person wants when they're going to you on their holidays. Yeah. So I think this, to space them out, I, there's a lot of houses here, but certainly if you start with the six and space them and landscape them, that from each house you actually don't see another house except a roof. Yes. Okay. And give them their outdoor spaces, but make them really individual pods. Looking at the restaurant now, I was underwhelmed by the restaurant. Oh, Francis, you're breaking yeah. her heart. I'll explain it by the way, I, the way I think it was. You built a restaurant and probably were thinking that we do candlelit dinners and very special food at night yeah. and everything would be lovely. Okay, so we put curtains in, yes. we put brown tables and brown chairs and we're by the seaside. Absolutely. So, to me. Beautiful candlelit dinner. Yeah, but we never went there, as you know. Mm -hmm. It didn't really happen. So now we have to look at that room and say, what is wrong with the room, first of all, all right? And then do a menu and everything else to suit. Okay. As a, as a couple, you had no experience of food and beverage no. either. No. We just, no. You admitted that, okay, that's yeah. fine, listen, that's grand. Okay. Yeah. But we need to re rescue that now. And John and I were talking about it, and we think the life of the restaurant should be from 10 or 11 in the morning until seven at night. Oh, interesting. Because yeah. you don't have the experience to run a restaurant. Yeah. And four out of every five restaurants that open close because the people don't know what they're doing. And you don't have the skills to bring the food out of the kitchen. Okay. So also because of the location you're in and the business that you have on site, there is a much simpler approach to food than what you're trying to do. And on the restaurant side, we need to get somebody, to help you to get somebody that's going to run it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean now? Whether yeah. that's in-house or whatever, we'll talk about that at some stage as well. But the main thing is really what you're trying to achieve is create a community and create a destination that's unlike any other one in the southeast of the country. I thought when Francis um, named it a hen house, that was harsh. Yeah, I think it was um, a little bit unfair, I think, because it's floor to ceiling glass and it's panoramic sea views and anyone else that stepped into it kind of gave us the wow factor. So I was a little bit disappointed to hear that, but I suppose fair enough, it's Steve interesting. We'll, we'll market it as the hen house and as, a, as a take on Francis Brennan. <laughs> it'll be a uh, one's off and hopefully no hen parties. Hen yeah. parties need not apply. <laughs> the menu side of things I think was fair because we have been trying to find our way in the dark a bit on that, so I thought that was fair. Um, I felt a little bit knocked back about his comments on the decor because I, I totally get where he came from at the beginning with the curtains and, and we do have darker tables but then we have a lot of reds and purples and a lot of other colours have brought into it and really bright paintings so I kind of thought that there was that more relaxed feeling coming into it in the last two seasons so but obviously with fresh eyes there's not so we'll have to look at that and that's fair enough. We really need to get the, the lodges up and going as a priority and then certainly if they're if we're moving forward on those, then we can start tweaking the other parts of the, the facilities as well. The Brennans have concerns with a busy mobile home park to run, a full-time restaurant to manage, and the uncertainty that surrounds any planning application. Have they bitten off more than they can chew? You know, I'm worried about Grace and Alan mm -hmm. because I think the plan that they've put together is very ambitious and I would be very surprised if it goes through all the loops that it has to do in planning yeah. in the location they're in. Yeah. Coastal planning is always a problem. Yeah, and the difficulty with that, it's time. Like it's a year, year and a half down the road by the time you get a real answer. Where, where, where are we going to be then at that stage? Yeah, you'll be grey anyway, John. Well, it's in the blood. <laughs> Coming up, planning problems. And are you expecting or have there been any objections? A survey confirms the Brennan's suspicions. Only one person wanted a fine dining experience. Okay. Are you laughing? Because <laughs> yeah. John and I predicted that. <laughs> and making a splash in Dunmore East. Oh, Alice in the water. John and Francis Brennan are helping Alan and Grace Skeen with the expansion of their holiday and golf resort in Dunmore East. They want to build six luxury lodges in time for summer, just nine months away.
disappointed by their prototype, Francis has arranged an inspirational visit to the new Duck Pond Suites at Marlfield House in Gorey, County Wexford. Come on, Rose, down this way. Come on down oh, now, yeah. Wow, look at this. What do you think? Fantastic. Yeah. Beautiful. Isn't it lovely? Yeah. Stunning, yeah, absolutely yeah. Now, what stunning. word did you use there just as you walked through the gate? It has the wow factor. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't you be delighted to be going to stay there? It's stunning. Yeah. It's beautiful. And that's what we want. We want somebody to say, oh, look at this. Mm. Okay, come on, we're going to have a look. Off you go, I'll follow you in a minute. Okay. We'll see you in a few minutes. Don't worry about the checkbook, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful, isn't it? Oh, it really is, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. The colours and everything. The girl on the wall is lovely, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Straight away, it's just really, really tranquil, isn't it? Yeah, the bed head. It's lovely. It's the colours, it's just the, yeah. the way it's brought in. It's quite soft. And then just the strong picture on the wall down there. Isn't it gorgeous? Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. I wasn't sure from the outside whether you'd still get the height inside but it makes a huge difference. I love the round windows. Yeah, they're fabulous. You they're see lovely, this? Yeah. This is absolutely beautiful, but with that... Wouldn't work for Practicality. Us. Yeah, it, that's the us, thing. It's, it's stunning there. The windows are lovely, aren't they? I love them. These now are for couples and for people away on romantic weekends and things like that, whereas they're in the family market by the beach. But the idea of bringing them here was to give a high-end look at things. They got the wow, which is great, okay? And maybe they'll understand that to make something really special, they have to work very hard at the decor and the style of the lodge. Now, what did you think? Beautiful. It's yeah. as nice yeah. inside as it is, as impressive as the outside is. Right. Yeah. I mean, simple things like the bed head, the Mm. the colour on the bedhead as a statement or an accent chair, that lovely chair that they have there as well. One simple good thing can make the difference. To actually come and see what brings the premium market is another thing, isn't it? It certainly is, yeah. It's the little things, it's the height and the ceiling, it's the round windows, it's the, the things colours, you touch. Panelling. Yeah. It's a lot of different. Yeah, and I know that's an exclusive premium product but there's definitely something to take away from it. With just nine months to go before the summer relaunch, Francis needs Alan and Grace to stay focused. So now, before you go, I just want to say I'm worried, OK, about timeline now, yeah. all right? It's important that you keep absolutely pushing, pushing, pushing for the planning because that's going to dictate when we can open. I had hoped that you'd be open by May, all right? But that might slip a little, all right? But if it doesn't, we need to be ready with everything else to go because every last month is lost revenue. Francis has given them inspiration for their lodges. Now it's John's turn. He wants them to start thinking about restaurant interiors and has taken them to his own place on Kenmare Bay. Now I just want to show you in here. The decor has been modestly but cleverly designed. And this is very, very simple. People come in here and say, oh my God, the timber work is beautiful, it's pure wallpaper. We have a floor that looks like wood, but it's actually tiled, which is really easy to clean. Yes. These tables here are all shuttering boards um, for scaffolding, sure. uh, scaffolding boards, which are only cut in three, like they're cheap as chips on ordinary decking below. You don't okay. have to spend a fortune of money, um, particularly in a location like this, because that's half the experience. Okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's, it's about food on a plate, certainly, but you have, this is a huge part of it, near the exact same as that. So transforming what you have into something different isn't telephone numbers, it's just a bit of imagination, a bit of thinking, and it's based on the menu that you decide to put together. Okay, and John Francis was saying earlier about that he thought that we had too many dark colours in our restaurant yes. because of the setting. Um, and I see here that you've gone for relatively dark, dark. tables as well. Driftwoody. Okay. Like, these are rough tables. Like, right. it's not polished and it's not um, finished um, perfect and it's not meant to be. Okay. Like, you don't have to beat yourselves up over it. You have the location, you have the four walls, you have the view. It's just a little bit of thought put into the decor inside. But yeah. when a person comes in, they say, oh, it's really nice. But it doesn't cost you an awful lot of money. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's often said the three most important things when opening a hotel or a restaurant is location, location, location. We have those three things here. What we have to do now is get that translated into their menu and into their decor, and then they're on a winner. 
Following the Brennan's criticism of the original layout for the lodges, Grace and Alan have drawn up new plans. This is really different, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. Um, these guys here are more spread out. Yeah. It's taking what John said, taking that into account. Yeah, it gives me an instantly much better hit than the last plan. I suppose there's more of a holiday layout to it rather than the estate. So. Yeah. But will Francis approve of the new design? So now, Alan, looking at the layout of the land here, tell me now what's changed. Since uh, we met with yourself and John, we've decided um, to lower the density and um, spread them out further. We're going to head turn to a slight curve out in this direction here, right. which we hadn't before. Um, and basically we're going to... And work back from that. And work back from that. Yeah, it's a much better idea because uh, before it was a bit like a housing estate, whereas this is much more like I'm in the country. It is. It's yeah. a lot more, uh, it's a lot softer. So in relation to planning now, where are we? We're still at pre-planning stage, right. but we're um, expecting to get an awful lot of the work done pre-planning and then lodge the application. Now, why is it only at pre-planning at this stage? Everyone's so. working from home now at the moment, so it's it's... They're only getting into the office once a month and so on and so forth, so right. it's, uh, things have slowed down. And, all and does that have implications for next summer then? It does, obviously. It does, yeah, it does. Hopefully we're aiming, still hopeful Later. for the end Later of August. But now, it is very disappointing that there's a delay on the lodges, but it's off nobody's making, which I can understand. But what we can do, we can get everything else going, like the restaurant, the new menu. And also, I have a survey, which we had done, and it's a very interesting result. So, I want to talk about that now. Great, yeah. let's go. The Brennans are worried that their restaurant is too formal and unsuited to a casual family holiday maker. So they've commissioned a survey of the mobile home customers to see if they agree and to find out what they would really like. So the first question was how often they would or wouldn't come to the restaurant, okay? And a third of the people said they would only visit the restaurant once a month or never. Okay. Yeah. Now, that's, yeah, mm. that's interesting. Th there's a lot of space there now to collect business from that. There certainly is a lot of room yeah. for improvement. Yeah. 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 Okay, well that's fine because we've got to work on that, all right? Okay, now, this is an interesting one, okay? Only one person wanted a fine dining experience. Okay. <laughs> Are you laughing? Because <laughs> yeah. John and I predicted that, okay? <laughs> So the third question, okay, almost three quarters of the respondents said they would socialise with other families while on the site. Yeah, but yeah. maybe we'll look more at daytime oh, activities no, the type of, and such. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, like you could do yogas and card games or whist Definitely nights or whatever. golf and the whole lot. Like, I think it's other things as well as the golf. Yeah. Now, over 90% of respondents said they were likely to use a cafe shop on site. I'm really happy to hear that. Yeah. yeah. And you know what, a coffee shop or a cafe, that type of thing, the margins are much bigger than in fine dining and a much lower staff input as well. Okay. So it's win-win. Yeah. So we need to work towards if that. the demand is there, yeah. then yeah. Yeah. yeah, perfect. All right. Did anything really surprise you? No, nothing no. really surprised me, I suppose. And the restaurant, you're not upset about the fine dining? I suppose we were a bit green back then, weren't we? And yeah. we thought it was, um, I what thought you notice, it was the mix. Nothing is better than ever admitting that you made a mistake. Yeah. I do feel for them because they're here now, raring to go and in situations where they can't get planning in time, it's looking like it's going to be dragged out. The houses then will be pushed on and they won't have them for next summer. There's financial implications of that. But what we have to do is to stick with the things that we've discussed, restaurant, new menu, whatever it is, okay. And we've got to keep pushing that because we cannot let our hearts sink. We've got to keep going. Grace and Alan have the next few months to decide what to take from the Brennan survey to finalise the planning application and decide what to do with the restaurant and the rest of the business. With winter shut down and the place in lockdown, the site is closed, but essential maintenance keeps Alan busy. What a day. And a new addition to the family provides a welcome distraction. Bloody. <laughs> Since the last day we were in Marlfield House, there's been changes to the plan, I suppose. The plan has been upscaled to a certain extent. And there's an awful lot of, you know, trying to bring together engineers' reports, architects' reports. The plan has been tweaked. I think it's on its fifth or sixth tweaking of the plans now. Come on. Come on. The more pre-planning preparation you do, the better. And make sure that everyone is on site and everyone understands exactly what you're making the planning permission for and what it is going to be. The planning application for the lodges has now been submitted and there's an anxious wait for an answer. 
So here we are now in April 2021, all right? And we're delayed, delayed, delayed. So where are we? Where are we? Uh, we're still waiting on planning permission. Right. Uh, Should hear soon enough, hopefully. Uh, in the next in two yeah. weeks time. And are you expecting or have there been any objections? There have, um, there's some objections in from some of the holiday homes on site here, but look, they're entitled to do that. So we'll just uh, deal with each, deal one, with each and, one and take it on and deal with it. And do you want to expand on what the objections are? Are, are very much traffic. It traffic. is one of the things, yeah, traffic in Dunmore right. East, that's one of the things. But look, nothing that can't be dealt with from our yeah. side anyway. And right. solved. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. that's it. So. And as Francis wasn't happy with their prototype lodge, they're now considering different options. So tell me now, of the lodges that you looked at, I think there were three in the early days, was it? where are you with those? Uh, we've narrowed it down to two mm -hmm. um, at this stage, and we're going to have to go out and have a look at them basically, but we've narrowed it down to two suppliers. And what about the restaurant now? Where are we with that? We've kind of gone for, on the advice of yourself and John, we've gone for um, a much more kind of casual setting. So we're going to be focusing very much on um, the early morning coffee, pastries, breakfasts, um, through to kind of a casual lunch, early dinner, pizzas, exactly as you suggested, and closing up that little bit earlier. And of course, it's gold dust that you have the outdoor dining, because that'll be brilliant this year and very important. With plans to improve the restaurant and the prospect of a really busy staycationer summer, Francis wants them to widen their horizons and attract new customers to the resort. So now you're all togged out and looking great, may I say, okay? Very much. Paddle boarding is yeah. a very popular sport, so I'm going to give you the honour of going ahead, learning all about it and enjoy. I won't be joining you. <laughs> Off you go, all right? Thanks, okay. It's great to see them getting involved in other things because they can package them and they will be an attraction for people to come and stay. So I'm very happy with that. Good luck, everybody. Don't fall in. Francis hopes they'll team up with local activity providers to offer holiday packages, encouraging people to the resort and to extend their stay. Oh, Alan's in the water. And Grace is not going to help him get out. She's gone flying by him. Oh, it must be freezing. Now, if Alan keeps going like that, he'd be in Wales. He's flying along. Up to now, Alan and Grace have focused solely on golf. Today has been a venture into uncharted waters. It looks like great family fun. Did you enjoy it anyway? Yeah, would you do it again? Yeah, great. That's fantastic. <laughs> Do you enjoy it yourself? Yeah, 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 it's lovely it? to get out there, yeah. Good yeah. fun, yeah. yeah. Coming up, Francis takes a wobble. I feel my buttocks are going up, never mind me. I, no, never mind me. Me thumbs. <laughs> Costs are mounting. Easy 2,000 has gone into it. And a decision from the planners. Uh, so here we go, Grace, the planning application. and Grace Skeen own and run Dunmore East Golf and Holiday Resort. They've asked the Brennans to help rethink their restaurant and advise about proposed luxury holiday lodges. It's been a hugely anxious wait, but now, at last, the planning decision has been made. Uh, so here we go, Grace, the planning application. Yeah. Refusal. Total refusal. Total refusal. Across the board. But the day that's in it, I can't pretend that I'm not disappointed. There's a lot of money, time and effort gone into it, but look. I'm always so optimistic, though I really thought that this was, this could be it. We put in so much into it. It is. It's disappointing for the village as well, you know. Yeah, But uh, yeah. look, we'll drive on with it anyway. Are we going to appeal? No. Is it worth appealing? No. The appeals process take a year and a half, two years now. Okay. In the middle of COVID, so. No, we'll do our tweaks, we'll do a few changes and go back in again. Yeah, that's all we can do, so, yeah. yeah. Planning permission being refused is a huge blow after everything seemed on course. John Brennan wants to know what went wrong. So tell us now, you have a bit of news for us, I hear. We do. We do. Uh, planning permission was a refusal. Right. So, yeah. 
right? Um, Tell you he's doing better than better than I am now. Yeah. I have to say you, you were, found it hard, did you? I did. Yeah, I was yeah. disappointed with it. Um, you took it very well, to sure, be fair. It's, it's planning yeah. in Ireland, so I know, yeah. second or third time. And tell me now, do you think it was an over ambitious application? Maybe. Perhaps uh, yeah. I thought there would have been an opportunity to reduce it, but look, right, we'll, we'll I know, go yes. back and look at it and deal yeah. with it again. So that's I think the, the fact that the application was during COVID as well was more complicated, wasn't it? It was. Yeah, a lot of the surveys had to be done. They were done during yes. lockdown, which didn't yeah. wasn't suitable for traffic and stuff like that. So got caught on a couple of things, all right. Yeah. But, so yeah. it was a timing thing as well yeah. as everything. It's never easy to be refused planning, um, and that affected them. But you know, the summer is here. They have the business. They have the location. They need to get the doors open and get the people in. With planning refused, there will be no lodges this season. And with a restaurant that they struggle to manage, Grace and Alan have embraced the Brennan's advice to find someone else to run the place. We've brought in a gentleman uh, as an operator here, um, so it'll take us more out of the loop, more as a silent okay. yeah, partner. It's, it's a partnership agreement we have right, with him. Okay. Yeah. I can see all the pluses in why you brought in an outside operator to run the place. The greatest negative in, in doing that is that you've trusted your reputation in the hands of someone else with which you have no control over. So they can make decisions from an operations point of view that mightn't suit you and your business and your, your residence on site here. So there's a lot of risk and you need a lot of control in it because it can go sour very quick. I'll look around to see go. the place. You know, I've mixed emotions here today for a simple reason. It is a magnificent location with fantastic opportunity, but actually they're giving away the future or they're sharing the future with a third party, which only time will tell if that's the right decision or not. The new restaurant operator is going to play a huge part in the future of the resort. So John is keen to check out his plans for Alan and Grace's restaurant. Donald Croak runs Blackfriars Cafe in Waterford and he wants to replicate his business model at Dummer East. Now the place is lovely and fresh and clean. Yeah, nice yeah, vibe when you came in. Yeah, yeah. So tell me now, what have you got in mind food-wise? What's the comparison here? But it's mainly a lunch trade for us now at the moment. Right. Okay. Well, it, it runs maybe from half past ten. People are passing, they yes. grab something. And to what take would you work. envisage? To start off with, when we open the coffee shop, it'll be very similar to this. Right. The okay. decor is going to be the very same, basically. Yes. We're going to take this team into the coffee shop. Yes. And uh, we'll have something very similar to this. To right. Start off okay. With. It's a kind of a, what I describe as a kind of a modern kind of a cafe menu, if you like. Right. So we do lovely fresh salads, warm salads as well. And menu-wise for dinner choice as well. Many things are you thinking, are you? We're thinking casual, isn't it? Very casual, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. A simple menu, yeah. yeah. Not a huge selection on it, but really good quality. Right, okay. That's what we kind of, that's the ethos of what we yes. do with our food. Now, this is a very slick operation, very professional. He's very, very good at what he does. It looks very well. It'll work very well in Dunmore East. I have no worries whatsoever, but it's a partnership. And they can be great or they can be bad, and only time will tell how that's going to work out. Donal, the new partner, will create a coffee shop in the lobby area, run outdoor dining on the terrace, and revamp the restaurant. Golf is the number one attraction driving visitors here. Well, can you imagine that happened? <laughs> here we go. Oh, not bad. But if the resort is to develop, Alan and Grace are going to have to attract not just golfers, but other customers. And to prayer, and down to centre. And when you're ready, you can take your alternative leg up, lift the arms up, and then you can turn the thumbs up to the ceiling or up to the sky. I feel my buttocks are going up, never mind me. <laughs> <laughs> never mind me, <laughs> my thumbs. <laughs> So now in the summer, this would be ideal for like packaging. Yeah, that's the idea is that um, we've kind of teamed up with, with Mary there that people can even possibly book it through the website when they're booking their holiday that they know they have yeah. their, their yoga pre-booked. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and sure, yeah. look, the outdoors, it does all the hard work for you. Oh yeah, no, but don't get too excited now. It's I'm not sure fantastic. we'll be on this tea ever again. <laughs> <laughs> there could be July balls anyway. going all directions in July and August, <laughs> but Grace will find a proper place. <laughs> But the main drive now is to renovate the restaurant before the busy summer season. The new restaurant manager, Donal, has called in his partner, Bonzi, to help. 
She's an interior designer and is to give the place a new lease of life. Now, Wendy, you might talk us through what you have in mind. Yes, yeah, so I think the general idea for the, the venue would be a sort of an ambience of relaxation. And seating arrangement now, what would you have in your mind? Seating-wise, I would be recommending that we do a window seat, the whole length of the, the seat here. Actually and using the sill absolutely. there as a seat. And possibly run long tables, which would also encourage kind of family dining as well, and it's bringing it back to that casual kind of trade. Yeah. Just to say to you, on this seating here, okay, just from a commercial point of view and from an operations point of view, long tables are difficult to get in and out of, plus the fact 50% of your diners here are going to have their back to the view, which isn't really what you would want. Yeah, and also they're going to have their backs up against glass, which can be cold or can be hot. Yeah. So this wall here is a big mm. long wall, which will give you the same effect. Yeah. And then put your tables over here mm. of your fours and your, your twos with everyone having a view. Then you've no row in the restaurant. That's true. They're all happy. That's yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely. In spite of his first rejection, Alan hasn't given up on the planning application, even though it's proving a very expensive process. Well, now, you'd want a week off to read all of this, so you would. You would. There's plenty in it. Tell me now, what have you spent on the application to date? 82,000 has gone into it. 82,000. Yeah. That 82,000 is out the window, unless we can learn something from it that helps us with a future application. Yeah. So what can be salvaged from it? What can we learn? Well, I suppose as regards the plan application itself, there's a good few of the surveys and stuff like that. Right. Uh, that'll still stand to us, but as regards what the council want, I suppose it's something more compact and denser. Reduce the size of the overall Footprint. site. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of away from the ethos of the whole development, uh, but it's certainly something we'll have to look at and see okay. if there's a happy medium to be, to be met. I'd love to have another go at it for the simple reason. I think what you've done here has been really great because you haven't copycatted every other place and it takes guts to do something new and inventive and creative. So perhaps we have to look at it again in a different light. You know, when a business person makes the planning application, they've really put their heart and soul into every element of that application. And to many people, it is their baby. To be refused planning permission is a huge setback. But in business, you have to rally the troops, put your feet back on the ground, your head back on your shoulders, deal with what you have, and get on with the business. There is a season ahead. And first task, transforming the lobby into a coffee shop. Alan and Grace are lovely. Right from day one we got on really well and um, they'd just be brilliant and they really gave us uh, free reign here and I think they're happy so far with what we've done but uh, I think going forward uh, we're going to uh, have a very good relationship. A couple of weeks of seriously hard graft and the lobby area has been transformed. With outdoor dining now open, the coffee shop is a vital string to their bow. Donal has been working away endlessly there. Really busy, the, the usual few teething problems with coffee machines and tills, and it's all the extras, the utilities. But he's, um, he's worked endlessly. I think when you're going from trading into doing a partnership with someone, myself and Donal could get bogged down in the nitty gritty of doing a, a transition over. But at the moment for this week, it's about getting bums on seats, coffees on the tables, and a few drinks outside and being open. And as the restaurant makeover continues, interior designer Bonzi has taken John Brennan's advice. Yeah, John made a really good point about the window seat. So what we have done is we've decided to change the seating plan so that um, bo both sides of the table are going to enjoy the, the panoramic views there. And the bar is also undergoing a much needed makeover. Our plan for this space was to have a slight kind of a study library edge. Um, just to give it that kind of relaxed vibe. So with the, with the gallery wall then, we put in a mixture of some of our own personal kind of tastes as well. Um, just to give it a little bit of personality, a little bit of character. It's turning autumn by the time the restaurant is ready for its official launch. And it's a day of mixed emotions for Francis. You know, it's very disappointing, not a large insight. But you know, planning, as always, is fraught with difficulties. And this is one of the ones where we didn't win. But it is very, very disappointing. But have they delivered what the Brennans hoped they would achieve inside? Francis wanted them to take inspiration from the location. So Bonzi's boldly used marine teal and accents of blues and greens to create a strong identity for the restaurant. 
The Brennans wanted the place to have a more casual holiday ambience. Now foliage and plants cleverly soften the space. Bonzi has taken on board John's advice to give everyone sea views and cushions and prints add pops of style and colour. The bar continues the rich colours of the restaurant. It's designed to feel cosy and welcoming after a day at the beach or on the golf course. And the coffee shop has proven a big hit, especially with the weekend crowd. Hello there, how are you? Francis. Good morning, Francis. Oh, is this a transformation? What do you think? Absolutely gorgeous. I love the greenery and the dividers. It's really oh, it's, nice. And it's different enough holes. for you. Yeah, yeah, I love it. And I love the flowers. It's a whole fresh feel to it. It is, it is the isn't furniture's it? lovely as well. Yeah, it is. I love the chairs. Yeah, they look, they're gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. Tell me now, did things work well with Donald? They did, yeah. Donald was great. Yeah. And the partnership wasn't fraught with any year. No. No. Oh, no. And do you think we'll be back next year? Yeah, and we'll, and we'll keep him back as well. So, yeah. well as long as you it want will, him yeah. back and he comes back, that's great. Yeah, that's, that's it, good. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it looks yeah. very hopeful for, for yeah. the new year. No, it was good. Year. Now, the big question, where are we with the lodges and the planning, Alan? Uh, a work in progress, <laughs> I suppose you can call it. Now, Alan, it was a work in progress last year as well, if I remember rightly. <laughs> no. Now, we're having a brunch today, I believe. How many are you expecting? Anything up to about 30 people oh, for yeah, breakfast, right. lunch today. Oh, good. Uh, we thought it was plenty. Very good, very good. Can I help you with anything? Yes, yeah. actually, you can if you so want to. Perfect. Perfect. Start there now. Hello, everybody. You're all welcome. Francis is delighted that the improved facilities have attracted friends and family and a new clientele from far and wide. Good to have you here. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody, and you're all very welcome. Thanks for joining us today here at the Dunner East Holiday and Golf Resort. So I hope you have a very nice lunch in our refurbished restaurant, courtesy of Donal. And the decor was courtesy of Bonzi, which is beautiful. Thank you, all right. And I also want to congratulate Alan and Grace on all the work they've done over the years bringing tourism to Dunmore East. So enjoy lunch, everybody. Donald's introduced a new brekkie brunch menu where he's brought in lighter, healthier options. Now, Eggs Benedict. Lovely. And local Waterford favourites. Now, who's for the blah? Oh, great. And for those who have earned their calories. Now, ladies, a hamburger. You want to pump up those tyres on the way home if you eat all that? Oh, definitely. Anyway, enjoy, ladies. All right, thank you. And, and, and enjoy your meal. Thank you. Thank you. After brunch, Francis wants to see the notorious hen house where they've been trying out decor ideas. But first... So how did the yoga go? Yoga absolutely flew it. Yeah? Yeah. It and was, was it every day or what? It was. During the summer, it was three times a week. Right. Um, so we did a couple of early morning sunrise yogas. Oh, lovely. And we actually had some people travelling nearly half the country in the end to come down to do it. They oh. absolutely loved it. Yeah, very good. I'm looking forward now to seeing the hen house. Now, I, I really hope you like it. Yeah. Oh, you know, this is a bit of a, a change. It is. Yeah, it looks very well, actually. I'll have to eat my words now, I think, to be honest, all right? And I love the cushions and the lovely settee. You could sit there all day. Yeah, And look out, nice. yeah, in your little breakfast table. Very nice. Just shows you now the potential if you had your lodges up and running. I know, it would be amazing, yeah, yeah, if we could roll it out again. I'm going to have a look at the bedroom. Yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, it's lovely. Soft, easy colours. Terrific. You did a fantastic job here today, and the room has a lovely feel and I think it's brought new life to the place. So wishing you all the best, okay, to get that planning in and get going. Great, right. thanks very much. Okay, see you next Thank time. You so thanks a lot, thanks for all the help. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Today was a high point, I really enjoyed it. I was nervous about today. It was definitely the kind of the, the last hurdle to get over, um, but I thought there was a really nice atmosphere in the bar and restaurant where everything kind of clicked and you can actually see where this is going to go from here. Well, the Brennans will be clocking for the miles as they head from Dunmore East to Donegal for the last in the series next Monday when they get there at 9.35. They'll have to breathe new life into an old landmark. Meantime, as another balmy bedtime beckons, 
Today with Claire Byrne, we'll find out the best advice on how to sleep in this hot weather. That's tomorrow morning from 10 over on RTE Radio 1.